Welcome back, folks. It's me, Matt. Thanks so much for joining me on the channel today. Before we dive into today's content, I've got a quick question for you, and I want you to drop your answers in the comment section below. What's your favorite heavy weapon system? Is it the M134 minigun, like the one we're going to be talking about today, the iconic Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher, or maybe, like me, it's the tried and true 50 caliber machine gun? And personally, I've got a bit of a soft spot for the 50 cal. Of course, I've used it back in Afghanistan and I absolutely loved it, but also for good reason that recently I had a chance to fire one once again in a blank firing configuration using Hollywood style big blast effect blanks at the Aquino Tank Weekend held at the incredible Canadian Tank Museum. I was up on the M7 Priest in a full World War II reenactment mode, letting that 50 rip on its pintle mount. And let me tell you, it was an absolute blast, no pun intended. And a massive thanks to Steel Aces, the team behind the exciting opportunity of the tactical tank shooter game for getting me there and for sponsoring the entire weekend. And if you haven't already, go check out their website at steelaces.com. I'll put it in the description box below to see what they've got cooking. And you will not be disappointed in this tank sim. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very, very cool little game. I've actually done some live streaming on it recently. But comment on your favorite weapon system. I'd always like to hear about what your input is to these kind of videos and why thinking of putting a system like the M134 mini minigun on an Abrams, which is what we're talking about today, is somewhat of a strange tactical breakthrough, but maybe you have a better platform to put on top of there. Let's get into it. Now, as many of you know, I'm a strong advocate for loaders. Actually, human loaders, not auto loaders, because I think they had a huge amount of value in a multitude of different facets. But when it comes to today's conversation, it's protection from drones. We know drones are the common enemy of armor of today. And the loader, in conjunction with the commander, could have a lot more responsibility in engaging drones and protecting the crew and the vehicle from engagement from these terrible little monsters. But of course, the 50 caliber set upon the commander's position isn't probably best suited for this, which is why the US Army has been looking into mounting an M134 minigun on the M1 Abrams main battle tank. And it's one of those concepts that sounds awesome in theory. Big tank, big gun, even faster rate of fire to knock out drones out of the sky, what's not to love? Well, if you dive a little deeper, quite a bit actually, and this particular topic actually came presented to me from a Instagram page known as Main Battle Memes. He has a fantastic Instagram page talking about armoured situations, uh, some humour, certainly some of the best memes I've ever seen about main battle tanks, particularly US tanks. Uh, he is not a big fan of Challenger 2, but we actually get along really well. He's going to be making some content for me in the near future in YouTube shorts uh, because I'm really bad at them, and he actually just recently made one on a manual loader, uh, speed loading the 120, which was really, really cool. But he actually identified that this is a bit of a problem with the M134 minigun on top of this platform. And as cool as it looks to see a rotary gun spinning on top of a behemoth like the Abrams, there are a number of practical, tactical and technical reasons why this setup just might not be the best move. And he actually shared this on his Instagram page, which is why I want to dive into it. So we really do, though, need to acknowledge that elephant in the room, that drones are changing warfare for tanks, full stop. From Ukraine to the Middle East, we're seeing $500 consumer drones with DIY explosives, disabling or even destroying multi-million dollar combat vehicles. The threat is persistent, mobile, and in many cases very difficult to detect or track until it's already too late. So how do you defend a main battle tank which wasn't originally designed to fight these tiny flying threats in the air? Well, of course, most solutions nowadays are a layered air defense system with specialist platforms nearby. But that's not always feasible, so the logic goes, well, why not give the tank itself a weapon capable of engaging these targets directly? Enter the M134 minigun, a 7.62mm electrically driven rotary machine gun firing up to 6,000 rounds per minute. It's fast, it's very suppressive, and it's proven in a door gunner roll on helicopters and some vehicles. Slap it on a tank and suddenly you've got a high volume air defense system that's right where the fight is. Well, in theory. But let's take a closer look at where this thing is mounted. The loader's hatch. This is already one of the most compromised positions on the Abrams in terms of visibility. The turret is cluttered with periscopes, comms gears, GPS receivers, armor packages, and in some cases, additional RWS systems. CITV is also there, or Commander's Independent Thermal Viewer. There's a lot of things getting in the way, completely obscuring the visibility of the loader to even use a system like this. Now, imagine being that loader. You're trying to operate this minigun with limited field of view, rotating the weapon manually or somewhat semi-manually, trying to visually track a fast-moving drone buzzing around your vehicle. 
you've literally got seconds, maybe less, to spot, aim and shoot, and you're relying on the naked eyes and manual control to do it. Now, safe to say there are systems out there that will help the gunner of this kind of platform engage a drone. For instance, Trijicon have made a specific red dot mount, which you're seeing on screen right now, which looks really, really capable. And honestly, it'd be really nice to have in maybe use of a dismounted role, maybe for the commander, replacing that 50 cal. But you're exposed. There is so much exposure to a drone or potentially snipers or infantry that are dismounted around this area, or particularly artillery, or the drone itself. You're standing half out of the hatch during an active engagement, staring into the sky with a giant rotary gun in front of you. It's not small, nor is the 50 cal, but the rotary is actually supposed to be compact, but it's still fairly beefy. Now, if the drone is explosive, and of course many are, it's likely targeting your vehicle with the intention to kill it. That loader, he becomes a prime casualty in the process. The commander is obviously probably going to be popping his head out the top two, and maybe there's a capability of changing the 50 cal out for the M134 for the commander, just leaving the 240 Bravo for the loader, but you still have the same problem. There's a lot going on on top of that turret, and the drone isn't stupid. The operators of the drone are going to find a weakness in where your visibility or your arcs of fire is with those guns. And let's talk about angles. The Abrams turret isn't exactly a clean slate. Between the commander's independent thermal viewer and remotely operated weapon stations, armoured side boxes, spare road wheels, other kit on the back there, typically loaded onto the deployed Abrams, there's all sorts of gear, there's significant dead zones where the turret mounted minigun simply just can't engage effectively. A drone that's low and to the side, or even above and slightly to the rear, could be completely obscured, and you don't get a second chance. That's the nature of loitering munitions. They strike once, and if you haven't killed them first, well, you're in trouble. You've essentially got a massive volume of fire aimed at a very narrow cone of potential targets. That's not air defense. In my opinion, that's really wishful thinking. Another overlooked issue is ammunition and logistics of this thing. The M134 guzzles 7.62 by 51 millimeter like there is no tomorrow. At full spin, you're going through 100 rounds a second, even with a conservative fire rate, a decent ammo box might give you about 20 seconds of burst fire. Now scale that to a tank platoon in a high intensity environment, you need resupply often and those belts are not light, just like the 50 caliber for the commander. How much are you willing to carry? Are you sacrificing main gun rounds or coaxial ammo for this thing or the storage of the ammo around it? And then there's kind of the question of power as well. The M134 needs an external power source. The 50 caliber, for the most part, in its standard configuration, without RWS, really doesn't, adding electrical complexity to the turret that has already packed the gills with systems and technology. But more importantly, more failure points. When you make something electronic, the more heat signature it produces, the more drain of power, and inherently, just the complexity of the system if it fails is not easy to fix. The M134 is not a 240 Bravo. Normally, with the 240, you can fairly easily fix the stoppage or the malfunction. With the M134, it's certainly not the most ideal to set up and replace. Now, let's talk about some alternatives though. The M134 has its place. It's great for helicopters and suppression roles in convoy protection. I'm not saying that the M134 would not be useful for the main battle tank or the Abrams in general, but on top of the tank, I would find it's fairly underpowered, limited in its coverage, and overly complex for what it's trying to do. If you really wanted a rotary solution for an MBT, go big or go home. Something like the Gao 19B, a 50 caliber three barrel rotary gun would make much more sense. It offers more range, more punch, a better kinetic effect on larger drones or lighter vehicles. But again, not as a manually operated system. This is where the RWS comes into play. Systems like Crows, Protector, or even fully autonomous drone intercept systems are being tested by countries like Israel and South Korea. Those systems give you internal operation, thermal and optical sensors, auto tracking, stabilization, and of course, crew protection. Now, if the US Army is serious about protecting its tanks from drones, then they need to look at integrating these kind of systems and not strapping a Vietnam era rotary gun on top of its Abrams like it's an A-team upgrade. I'm not saying that the US Army is clueless here. They clearly have a lot of options and clearly they're experimenting. And I actually have a huge respect for the military of the United States looking at these kind of options. It's truly Americanized. I love it. I love that they're trying to put a minigun on top of an Abrams. There's nothing cooler. And they're responding to a real and dangerous threat. We can't really judge anyone who's putting a system like this on there. They're looking at trying to solve a problem. But this particular approach 
I do feel seems a bit like a stock gap, a field workshop solution to a complex modern battlefield problem. You can't rely on visual tracking and manual gunnery using a red dot to defend a $10 million tank from a $500 to $1,000 setup drone. That's not tactics, that's really, in my opinion, a bit of desperation. If the minigun mount is a placeholder for future RWS, then fair enough, but as it stands right now, it's tactically ineffective, logistically messy, and operationally quite dangerous. There's nothing worse than you potentially not paying attention to where that drone's going and spraying a thousand rounds a second into the back of another Abrams, or an Abrams that's kind of being supported in its own role shooting back at you. So those are my thoughts, folks. The M134 on an Abrams, very cool visual, terrible practical application. And at least in its current form, maybe they're going to create some changes or some upgrades to the platform so that it can be used in an RWS configuration for the loader or the commander, but I do not think it's suited for drones. I personally think they need to design something of a shotgun configuration that spreads a huge blast wave of multiple ball bearings, almost like a claymore gun, at drones that are coming in. But I'd love to let you see what you think of this in the comments section. Would a 50 caliber rotary make much more sense? Maybe it could be used as a engagement of other vehicles as well as small drones. Is this just the beginning though of integrating more air defense systems directly onto armor? If you enjoy this kind of critical analysis, make sure you hit the like button and let me know what your thoughts are. And of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. You can check out my other videos on modern vehicle upgrades, battlefield adaptations, and defense innovation throughout all of my content. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. All the best folks, bye-bye.